we've got a very freedom-minded, freedom-focused premier on our hands in Danielle Smith. And uh, of course, because of that, she faces um, attacks from the mainstream media and the left, but I'm probably repeating myself there, all across the country and here at home. Um, however, we are standing up to the federal government on the latest gun grab, um, which I I love the idea that these guys to even think that they can peg down how much the buyback, which is a, like a completely um, inaccurate, like it's a misnomer because you never owned these things to start with. So you can't buy them back from me. They I didn't buy them from you, um, but they don't have a clue how many SKS is, for example, that's one model are in the country, but they know how much it's going to cost to buy them all back from us. <laughs> sure, big guy. Sure. Um, so anyways, uh, we've got Alberta's chief firearms officer because we threw out the Fed one and decided to hire our own Terry Bryant uh, saying exactly what she's going to do to fight back against the feds. From the outset, it has been crystal clear that the federal government's initiatives on firearms have had nothing to do with public safety. A thriving business sector is a vital part of the firearms community and has for decades provided thousands of well-paid jobs across the country that have enabled skilled workers to provide for their families while supporting activities they love, such as hunting, target shooting, and the collection and preservation of historical artifacts. Federal measures have created threat after misguided threat to the livelihoods of these dedicated, hard-working business people and their employees. In May 2020, the federal government froze millions of dollars worth of inventory in place, requiring businesses to continue to finance product that they were forbidden to sell. The freeze on handgun transfers and proposals to ban almost all modern and many traditionally styled hunting and sporting firearms have deprived them of their most saleable products at the time that ongoing supply chain issues have made it difficult to obtain the few things they are still allowed to sell. Federal attacks on this industry are forcing its members to sell their frozen inventory to the federal government. As it appears that the federal announcement this morning had no detailed document or financing behind it, we do not even know whether they will consider the financing and storage costs dealers have paid to keep stock that they cannot sell. These entrepreneurs established their businesses to safely provide the firearms community with the equipment it needs to continue the long, honorable tradition of firearms ownership in communities large and small all across this great country. They should not be forced to turn their stocks over to the federal government at massive expense to Canadian taxpayers. We call on the federal government to reverse its punitive measures against the firearms community and allow businesses to sell their inventory to carefully vetted Canadians for the sporting purposes they were made for and not to the federal government for needless destruction. Wow, what I common sense, eh, Sheila? <laughs> I love her. And it's interesting yeah. to have somebody who is um, a CFO who actually knows something about firearms and the impact of firearms legislation yes. or lack thereof on the crime rates. Um, and the impact, it, like what they would call what the feds have done to the firearms retails retailers in Alberta, in the oil patch, we would call that stranded assets where you have something that you cannot use thanks to legislation. And that's what's happening here. And it's devastating family businesses. I think it was Wolverine. Could someone, will, if I'm wrong, <laughs> I'm going to get an email. But I think it was Wolverine and they made one um, model of an AR. And then the government banned uh, the AR. And then so it just destroyed their entire business. Everything is just gone. Just gone in the stroke of a pen. Oh, Wolverine's a brand of firearms. Yes. Well, it's a I thought you were talking about Logan, the X-Men. That I can talk does. chapter and verse on, but not the... <laughs> but, you know <laughs> but you know, I love the firearms community. And by the way, Sheila, uh, I know someone very dear to me. She's a recent firearms uh, owner. You know her too and love her. And um, she mentioned something the other day because I said, you know, if this thing ever gets going where the RCMP start coming door to door to... Uh, firearms owner asking for their handguns or rifles, whatever's being banned. Uh, what are you going to say? And I think I think she's on to something. She's going to say, you know something, Sarge? Went on a hunting trip last summer, canoe capsized 
My yeah. firearms are at the bottom bottom of Lake Nipissing. Boating Nipissi. accident. <laughs> Yeah. Boating accident. <laughs> Got them all, including my dad's. Yeah, guns. so what I'm saying um, is good <laughs> luck collecting. It ain't going to happen. Not only that, like, uh, now, Alberta's a little bit different. I don't know what the heck is going to happen in Ontario, but uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan, a few other provinces, they said they're not going to direct their RCMP to get firearms from law-abiding people they've got better things to do real crimes yeah. to deal with than kicking in the doors of their friends and neighbors uh, to steal their guns uh and you know if you've spoken to a cop recently like <laughs> that's the last thing they want to do most of them are uh, i don't know but again i don't know about ontario but i know out here in you know rural and semi-rural suburban uh, alberta they're firearms enthusiasts just like us they want to go hunting. They go shooting too. They are firearms owners. And I don't know if they want to steal each other's guns either. So I, I just, you know, it, it, it's it, all this is going to do is further fracture the relationship between communities and their police that was already excessively damaged through COVID. Oh, but Sheila, I think you know what's happening in Ontario. We just threw to a clip the Toronto Police Mounted Unit um, shutting down a drag queen uh, protest. Uh, I guess because there was no barbecue restaurant uh, operating <laughs> illegally to shut down. So, and this is a city, folks, where every single crime, everyone, is a double-digit increase. I believe uh, this is where honest, law-abiding citizens are getting murdered on the subway for doing nothing but minding their own yeah. business. Um, and yet, the mounted unit—think how expensive that is—is is shutting down restaurants, shutting down teenagers standing up for decency and morals. <laughs> yeah. That's how we roll in Ontario, Sheila. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, that's yikes. Right. Yikes. <laughs> Just yikes. And uh, you have a conservative government there. Conservative oh. government there. And John Tory is supposed to be like the right-leaning mayor. Give oh. me a break. Thank you anyway, for the air quotes with the conservative hard government. Hard air quotes. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion, and it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.